Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Outdoor Experiences. Today, we're going to be going over some common diseases that you may see in the wild, as well as how they affect the wildlife. If you enjoyed today's video, feel free to let us know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Now let's get into it. First on the list is mange. According to the New Jersey Fish and Wildlife, mange is a highly contagious disease of mammals caused by mites. These mites burrow into the skin of animals, most commonly seen in coyotes, deer, red fox, black bear, porcupines, rabbits, raccoons, and even humans. Even though all of these animals can get mange, coyote and fox are the most commonly sighted. Although it could be deadly for animals, the life cycle of the mites cannot be continued with inhuman skin, and therefore is less of a problem if contracted by humans. Mange is transferred by direct contact with an infected animal. For example, if one coyote has mange, it is very likely that the other coyotes in its pack will contract it due to the fact that these animals often spend very long periods of time within close proximity. If a household pet contracts mange, it can be treated through veterinary medicine. In the wild, however, depending on the season, mange can be more lethal. In the wintertime, mange is far more of a problem because it causes hair loss which leaves animals susceptible to the elements. In the summertime, there is a far better chance of survival as the immune system in these animals may be able to fight off the infections caused by the mites. The quickest way to determine if an animal is likely to have mange is by the hair and skin. Mange causes not only thickening, but loss of the hair on the body of the animal. You may also see large patches of scabs and pustules due to over-grooming from the itchiness. If you see an animal like this in a well, contact your local DNR to report the area in which you've seen the animal they may be able to go in and help retrieve the animal to get it proper medical care. It will also aid in the stopping of the spread of mange to other local animals. Next up we have chronic waste disease, or CWD. According to the National Park Service, chronic waste disease, or CWD, is a disease which is a unique family of diseases caused by malformed protein. CWD infects animals in the cervid family, deer, elk, moose, and reindeer. The malformed prion protein accumulates in the brain and other tissue causing neurological signs, emaciation, and death. Once clinical signs are observed, the disease is always fatal. This disease affects both free-range and captive animals. Although this disease is found in multiple countries as well as half of the states within the United States, it still remains relatively rare here in the state of Minnesota. The Minnesota Department of Natural Resource has taken precautions by limiting certain carcass movements within areas that they feel CWD may appear. These areas are mostly seen in southeastern Minnesota as well as the north and northwestern areas of Minnesota. One of the biggest reasons that Minnesota has taken CWD so seriously is although it is rare, there is still no cure for it. So what does it look like? Well, according to the CDC, as animals infected with CWD progress, these animals have a variety of behavioral and appearance changes. These may include drastic weight loss, stumbling, lack of coordination, listlessness, drooling, excessive thirst or urination, drooping ears, and lack of fear in people. In another section of the CWD report, the CDC also says, scientists believe CWD proteins likely spread between animals through bodily fluid, feces, saliva, blood, or urine either through direct contact or indirectly through environmental contamination of soil, food, or water. As of 2023, it is reported that CWD is most prevalent in the state of Kansas, where it is currently being tracked in 49 counties. Although there is not much that we can currently do to help prevent CWD, the easiest actions that can be taken are limit baiting of deer in CWD known areas, restricting the movement of carcasses in CWD hotspots, as well as thinning dense populations of deer where this likely to be a spike of CWD. We hope you enjoyed today's video and would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you have some suggestions on the content that you'd like to see next, feel free to let us know. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.